too. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you uh, you can see the other other people. We've got about six, but I'll probably be adding more people. I hope that doesn't bother you too much. But if you see me, I'm not I'm not really being distracted. I'm just trying to make sure that I let everybody in as they try to to, to come in. Okay, yeah, uh, I can see any everybody. So okay, it's cool. fantastic. Can, okay, can you fantastic. hear me well and see me well? Uh, yes, very good. I, yes, I can see you very well. Perfect. Well, thank you for taking the time. Um, I know that it's a kind of late your time, is it? It's uh, oh, it's okay. Seven p.m. is okay. Oh, okay, not, okay. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Yeah, it's um, not ten, you know. Yeah, right. And I have done that, and I've got, I've got people in our group that will that are in different parts of the world, and they'll stay up till two, three in the morning to watch artists that they well, like, just so that they can oh. be part of it. So I see them dozing off sometimes. <laughs> During, during these, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really funny. Okay, so I want to just go ahead and hop in if you are ready. Is that okay? For uh, for anybody that doesn't know um, who you are and what you do, for for me, anytime I think of Camille, I think of uh, this amazing drummer that can play these polyrhythms and that has just. Uh, it more like limb independence than anybody that I've ever seen. You you have made a, a name for yourself in with those skills. So can you tell us one thing? How did you get into drumming? Um, I started at 12 years old. Okay. Um, I actually discovered the drum set uh, on the medium school. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was on the music class. There was a drum set and uh, the music teacher asked, asked us if uh, anyone wanted to try the drums just to give it a boom, jack, boom, jack on one of the songs we were uh, gonna sing together for the uh, show of the end of the year, you know, uh, in front of the other classes and uh, in front of the parents. <laughs> So I gave it a try and I really enjoyed it. So that was my first steps on the drums. Uh, my mother was a percussionist. So uh, mm -hmm. I already, you know, been um, uh, really uh, swimming in that uh, rhythmical background. And uh, it was kind of an easy thing for me. Uh, everything that's about rhythm is, uh, is maybe easier than uh, than the rest, than the yeah. other people. Um, and I really went into drumming at 14 years old. Uh, I, I um, realized I really wanted to, to do that uh, while watching a uh, DVD of Placebo and named So Met Never Die. And um, yeah, with all the lights and the music and uh, the energy, I was like, okay, that's what I want to do with my whole life and nothing else. So <laughs> that was the real start of my drumming journey. <laughs> Fantastic. So you played um, drums all the way through school. Once you graduated from high school, did you go on to college for music? Yeah uh yeah kind of uh there was a musical option in my um oh no i'm um, misunderstanding high school and, and college yes um i did a musical jazz degree okay you know? so it was really complete stuff about uh, music and uh, more specifically jazz and uh i went to the conservatory uh, next to that with a drums class. So it, it was really only about drums and we went through a lot of different styles like uh, jazz, uh, uh, hand technique, double bass pedal, drum and bass, uh, pop, rock, fusion and uh, a lot of different styles. And uh, it's, it was really wonderful. That's fantastic. So once you got out of uh, college, did you go straight into playing with bands or doing some of your own projects? What did you do from there, from university? I, I actually started to play with bands 
as soon as I went on the kit, like maybe two or three years after my, you know, the first learning uh, mm -hmm. stuff on the kit, um, two, two or three years later, that's what I wanted to do. It was like almost a dream of mine. I want to play in a band. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I played in a lot of different bands going from fusion jazz to progressive rock or just regular you know oasis uh, call play kind of rock and um i um yeah i got maybe more serious bands uh, after graduating because i wanted to make really a living of it <laughs> so i had to earn money and stuff but it took some time and uh, it's only after having, you know, posted this uh, first Polyrhythms video that I really entered the um, the professional musical background and that I was called to do gigs and to, uh, you know, uh, play on the rock uh, musical opera. Um, mm -hmm. We played like 86 gigs in five months in Paris. Wow. Uh, then I I could audition for artists and uh, for touring and stuff. So yeah, it's only after graduating that I really made a living of it because uh, um, before that I had to you know give a lot of lessons and to uh, manage uh, to do. Uh, uh, to make a living of something else because I couldn't live with only music so yeah yeah and but now you're a full-time musician yeah. yeah 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 it's been uh it's been four four years yeah four years that I'm really a full-time musician so it's super cool <laughs> well fantastic and you should be you're so talented so I think Thanks. Um, every drummer kind of has their own voice on their instrument. Ten drummers can play the same song. And we're all going to interpret the music differently because we are different. So yeah, everyone how... is unique. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying everyone is unique. You're right. Correct. And the way you interpret music, I think, is extremely unique. Your ability to uh, to have so much independence with your both hands, both feet, everything. Your brain just thinks about music in a different way than mine does. I'm, I'm in awe of the way you do things. So how did you develop that skill? Because not all drummers obviously can do that. How, how has that been for you to develop that? I think it, it, it is perceived this way by a lot of drummers actually, like it's independence, but the way I see it, it's not independence at all. It's okay. everything is interlocked and is connected and it's more about coordination or interdependence than independence at all. It's uh, for me, the I learned this kind of thing the exact same way you learn a groove. Like the first time you, you have to do you, you must uh figure out okay uh my hi-hat is uh together with my kick then i have some snares going uh between some strokes of my hi-hat and that is the exact same principle with Correct, everything yeah. i do so yeah it's the way i learn it is just figure out um where are my my strokes placed on my um, common subdivision and uh, where are the space, uh, which limb can I play uh, at what time? And uh, I re really figure out, figure it out slowly. And it's, uh, it's about also muscle memory and, you know, just repeating the, the patterns and the polyrhythms again and again and again and then you learn it by heart you can uh perceive what it will sound like beforehand before you play it because you 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 know you know it uh by heart uh, really really 
um, ah, I don't have the, the same way of, uh, no, I, I think in French sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's uh, the exact same way. And uh, it's about slowness. It's about the common subdivision because it's not, you know, played uh by chance it's not random it really is precise uh, with a common subdivision that links everything and i just have to figure out where i place my strokes exactly the way you want to uh, learn a group so um yeah that's the way i see it and um the the first method i can talk about it because the first method that really puts me on trails on that is uh, called Rhythmic Illusions by Gavin Harrison. This is a fantastic method to really introduce you to this kind of word and, uh, you know, polymetric uh, patterns and the superpositions of groups of notes. So it's a uh, it's really amazing book. And I'm currently writing my own uh, drums Fantastic. book. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, I can't wait to share it with you guys and, uh, you know, really share my way of viewing things and of working, this kind of thing. But uh, this is the first uh, to start uh, method you can uh, go through. And uh, yeah, or you can go to my master classes also but it's COVID time so it's complicated right right yes. now but i, I was going to ask um, i love teaching that in the master classes and clinics it's really fascinating the, oh that's what i was going to ask since you can't most of us can't tour right now because of COVID and everything else um yeah. are you doing more teaching and and classes then um during the the last year and obviously you said you were you're doing master classes yeah um every master class is physical master classes uh were canceled of course uh and postponed and we don't know where uh when it could be possible again but no i'm actually not uh teaching that much uh, online, I experimented some uh, masterclasses online. Uh, there was one uh, in the UK in uh, in October, I think, uh, that that happened online. So it's uh, interesting, but mm -hmm. it's um it, it's not the same as a physical uh, masterclass, obviously. And um, no, I'm not really, I obviously have some people asking me sometimes for uh, online lessons, online lessons, that, that's possible. But uh, no, I currently focusing on uh, the writing of my methods. And uh, it's uh, really strange and funny, but I actually also have worked with bands uh, since we rehearsal and we, you know, uh, focus on the new um, repertoire <laughs> to play when everything will be possible again. So we are ready to, to go. Uh, so I, I meet a lot of new people also because uh my projects my uh, musical projects uh i'm working with rehearsals and stuff are new so it's been three months i've been only meeting new people and playing new music and it's really cool i'm uh, feeling really lucky about that uh so yeah i'm really busy busy but um not so much on master classes uh but yeah uh i i do more master classes online than ever of course but uh, not that much <laughs> okay um so i i know that you've done some things for drumio can you tell me about that experience yeah yeah it was back in 2018 okay and uh, it was super cool i actually just sent them an email six months ago and uh, six months before the the, sh the dreamio shoot and uh with showing them some videos of what i was 
doing and they were like wow super cool it doesn't really exist on the platform yet so yes uh, let's uh, plan something so it was very exciting uh, i wasn't expecting uh, that to be you know that e easy and uh, uh you know it will happen it's 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 in six months <laughs> get prepared and stuff so it was a uh, very cool um it was really intense though uh, just two two days uh in the canada in vancouver so uh, i uh, didn't really have time to you know do some tourism <laughs> but uh yeah it was uh happening two day two days with uh, shooting a lot of different things because there was not only the online lesson lesson and some videos they post sometimes on the, their social medias but also all the contents that we uh wanted to shoot for the drumio edge drumio mm -hmm. platform from the mm -hmm. for the members of drumio and uh, yeah it was very very cool and it uh, brought a lot of um, new uh, followers and uh, it, it uh, created the opportunity for people to get to know me and me to get to you know discover new people that are interested in this kind of thing so it was really great and uh, it uh, made a huge change in my career too i must say um and i i really hope to be able to do it again because now i have some new content and new way of ways of explaining things so uh i can't wait to to be on on Dromeo for new shoots uh, again <laughs> oh that's fantastic that's fantastic yeah so with COVID, I know that different places in the world are still completely shut down. Some places like in the United States, even different states have different levels of being open. Now I'm in Oklahoma and we've been basically open almost everything for months already. So you can go into a restaurant, you can go watch a movie mostly. Every so we're, we're not going to I know we're not go we can go shopping we can't go um we can't go to concerts but like casinos are open that kind of thing and you can see live music there but most everything else is still closed so I don't know what it's like uh, are you in Paris or where you are in, in France yes I'm in Paris and uh it's not the same <laughs> <laughs> what is it what is it like for you guys uh it's been months that we are under curfew so we have to uh to get home be before 6 p.m oh wow uh, otherwise we have to pay 125 euros wow I don't know what, what is it in dollars but it's uh maybe uh yeah no I, I don't know exactly but not not that much or not that less um and we have we have basically every cultural thing closed and every bar every restaurant closed only the little shops and the medium shops are open and uh, until 6 p.m of course they are not open after that hour and uh yeah so we we can't play gigs play live we can't see museums expositions we cannot mm -hmm. go to the cinema we cannot go to the restaurant to the bars so it's really really restricted and uh we don't get the point of it because why we could what could why could we uh get very uh yeah massive people in the the metro and the subways to you know to be able to get home before 6 p.m there's an, an amount huge amount of people in the transport or even in the the shops just before 6 p.m it's uh, amazing you have queues you have um you, you have a, a, an amount of people that never we, we never see usually because uh, everyone wants to get their 
uh, shopping food and stuff uh, before they go home early. So uh, yeah. why could this happen and not just, you know, uh, uh, going to the cinema or gigs with um, 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 with restrictions and uh, sanitary restrictions and be being okay with that. that that makes no sense so we it, it it's kind of crazy and uh, I don't mm -hmm. understand any of of it so I just focus on my work and focus <laughs> on the things I can control and do right. and uh i don't even want to hear about it so <laughs> i understand <laughs> i understand <laughs> now when things are open again does your band have uh plans to to perform to tour uh, do you have those things in the works now yeah we have um i have a trio so it's uh, pretty easy to uh, schedule uh, for the gigs and festivals and stuff. So uh, as soon as we can, uh, we will be able to, to gig again with this trio. Um, maybe some masterclasses too, because we can control, you know, the amount of people coming and uh, the, the spaces between people and stuff. So I hope masterclasses will be able to, to happen again soon. And uh, yeah, um, but we, we don't really plan things. Uh, even today, we're not uh, still not able to plan anything because we we don't know where the government is going to lead us to. So, correct. Yeah, it's a kind of a, a, a plus, no, um, a haze. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the correct word. Yeah. <laughs> Your English is really, really good. I'm surprised. You, you. you have good English. Good yes, English. Um, okay, you. so you guys, um, does anybody have a question for Camille? Questions, please. Come on, somebody's got a question. I know you guys. Okay, go ahead, Sherry. We don't hear you. Wait, wait okay, Sherry. There we, uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Hi, Camille. Uh, my question for you is so. Oh, uh, you're frozen, Sherry. I'm so <laughs> Do sorry. You hear that thing? I'm sorry, you were frozen when you oh, said something. <laughs> can you can you repeat your question? Oh, okay. Sure, thank you. Um, where um how do you include these polyrhythms and things when you're in your playing? Is it like using it during a fill? Is it soloing? Is it like your main groove sort of thing? How how do you how do you obviously, obviously you, you must use this kind of thing in proper context you don't want to use it uh just to try to place it you know uh on a pop gig <laughs> with regular fees and stuff that makes no sense so it you really have to choose uh the the context that will uh, that are appropriate to this kind of thing so I use it in my compositions because I love doing musical composition that emphasizes the emphasizes this kind of thing uh, because it's really musically uh, interesting right. and it's very interesting to to make compositions out of it also not only on the drums mm -hmm. uh, I use it a lot in the soloing just drum solo uh it's a it's a material i use a lot and or just you know ostinados and polyrhythms maybe not only poly polyrhythmical ostinados but uh ostinados with the feet you can uh play a lot of things different things with your hands and when you can manage to play patterns in three or in four or in five uh it's uh it's really cool to use them in the soloing uh, i uh, like to trick the audience too uh <laughs> meaning that you know i uh play a certain pattern that will sound a certain way to the ears of the audience and then i add another pattern that is not in the same grouping so it's like oh what's happening and it's <laughs> sounding completely different and you know if you play a melody and just 
make the experimentation of that experience of that uh, play a melody in four four or whatever six eight four four and try to add um, a kick in three on it it will sound and dance a certain way and just after try to put a kick but in four this time and it will change completely the feeling of the what you're playing so i really like to use this kind of thing and what uh, the impact it has on the audience on my soloing i can spend 20 30 minutes soloing because there's so much to use and to explore and uh, it's really 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 cool and uh, fun to to do <laughs> so yeah um what other context um some compositions that are you know musically uh, appropriate to to do that uh you you're not you don't have to write it yourself but some uh you know progressive rock or metal styles propose this kind of compositions when you can really have fun finding some poly polyrhythmic parts and or gent music you know this kind of thing so you, you must really choose an appropriate context you don't want to play it just to to try to play it and to place it somewhere when it's not appropriate <laughs> right right thank such you such a great question thank you so much Sharon. that was great thank yeah. you camille um, who else has a question for Camille? Anyone? Okay. Uh, oh, Maya, go ahead. Yeah, actually, so I, I play a lot more jazz and I, but I also used to play timpani, um, classical percussion. So I sometimes imagine my tom-toms as timpani and just the melodicness uh, with the uh, pitches. So do you, um, my question is, in addition to all the polyrhythms and rhythmic changes that you can use, do you inc do you try to make melodies on the drum set or um, any other um, textures that you use that um, okay electronic features or anything like that? Yeah, of course. Um, about that, I have uh, a kit with an eight inches tom that's uh, getting sadly more and more rare <laughs> but uh i love to play melodies i don't uh, um about that <laughs> sorry uh, i uh, i think about uh what i can i can um uh tell but um when i do polyrhythms i often propose melodies on the toms uh and i really like to use four toms like eight, 10, 12, and 16 inches. And that is on the purpose to, uh, as you say, um, play melodies, because um, it's a very interesting aspect of the drums. And uh, as this concept is very rhythmical, it, uh, you must find a way to make it sound musical still and using melodies is uh, a great great way to to do that and I love I love using melodies and um, I use stacks a lot too uh, it's not really about melodies but it's about orchestrations also uh, I think it's very important uh, a phrase in five can sound totally different if you play it on the toms uh, than if you play it on you know two different stacks with very short uh, sustained sounds so it's uh, it's super cool and i would like actually to integrate to my drum kit uh, more melodical elements like you know uh, if i could have a little uh, package of little bells, you know, uh, with a different sound or little, very little uh, splashes or uh, more melodical sounds, I, I would be, um, I would be very happy. But now I, I already have a pretty cool kit and, uh, but it's an idea I have in my head and uh, 
when I will be able to realize it, uh, I will do so because I, I really like to explore melodical um, elements and uh, even on the feet, actually, I love to play the wood block and it's, it brings a sound that um, make it sound different. Uh, the, the soon as you play it, it's like, whoa, what's happening? And it's, uh, you know, we are in uh, some uh, uh, American or uh, African countries, and it's uh, it's super it's super cool the way it sounds. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, any other questions? That was a great question. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. Somebody else have a question? Don't be shy. <laughs> well, I have a question for you. I know that I've gotten. Um, oh, somebody wrote, Camille. What's the title of your book, uh, and when will it be launched? Um, I'm still thinking about the title, but for now it's uh, the Polyrhythms Odyssey, but uh, it's still a suggestion, uh, maybe it will change. And I hope to release it before 2022, <laughs> uh, but I still have to think about it because uh, I'm not sure uh, of the the right moments uh, with COVID and stuff, the right moments to release it. If I can could release it, uh, even if everything, every masterclass is is still little blocked with the COVID, should I still release it and it will be okay, or should I wait for you know a time where it's really cool to to promote it uh, the best way I can with masterclasses and stuff. So. I, I don't know about that. Maybe I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe if you have some suggestions. <laughs> about that, but, that would be yeah. a hard one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question Dara just uh, just asked was, um, do you play open handed? So instead of crossing your hands to play, do you play open handed? Uh, no, I um, I'm very used to play this way <laughs> but um it's a big regret of mine uh actually that uh not um having been aware of you know it, it's not the only way you can play you can also play this way and uh, i didn't realize it till uh very not not so long ago uh so now i try to really let the fields happen and if i must uh, end my field with the left hand i will do so and i train myself a lot to 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 do that and be comfortable with it because uh um i've been stuck a long time with the right hand and you know every field must uh end with the right hand and if it ends with the left hand, then double one of the hand and it will still end on the <laughs> right hand. So uh, I realized really uh, a few years ago, it's really, really uh, too late, but uh, that it's okay to finish the fields with the left hand, you know, and just to uh, be equal with your, your hands. So I really encourage you to, to do so and to, to try uh, other configurations and to try to play everything with your left and right hand the same way mm -hmm. but yeah it's very interesting question i, I had uh, I, I had uh, hired annika nilas to give me some skype lessons a few years ago and uh, we were working on a song and she had a great feel and i i usually can listen to somebody play it or watch somebody play it and and try to copy that i could not figure out how she was landing hitting with her right hand on the on the hi-hat and she said oh you start the fill with the left and of course like you were just saying if you're right-handed you generally will start a fill with your right if you're not yeah. really thinking about it so yeah. it wasn't easy i was ending over here and i wasn't but if i had started with the left i would have been in the right placement so exactly what you're saying you have to train yourself to think differently than just always it's starting or ending with your right if you're right-handed you have to be able to right. do both the same exactly 
um, okay, here's a question that I get a lot and um, and probably you get a lot, but just for the sake of this audience, um, most people can, they can play in front of other people. They can play with bands. It's really easy to play grooves and, and do some fun things. But when it comes to sitting down and writing a solo or playing a long solo in front of other people, they freeze up. Um, is that something that you kind of had to train yourself to do or was that something a really easy thing for you to do? Um, I started doing solos uh, maybe yeah three years ago but that's uh, because I really wanted to because I uh, wanted to express a lot of things on the, the drums uh, with really soloing uh and especially with polyrhythms or stinados and uh, this kind of thing but i think it's a matter of practice um each time i um i do a, a drum session practice session i always start with yeah like one hour where i play what i want and just express myself and just have fun and explore and uh, let myself be and go and uh, it's uh, brought up a lot of ideas that i recorded uh, with an audio recorder and um, every time i have an idea and i think it's interesting enough to you know uh, dig it and find some things around it and maybe enrich enriching it uh, I take the time to do so and um, you know I ended up having a, an amount a huge list of uh, ideas you can uh, apply on your uh, drum solos and uh, yeah it can be it can be frightening if you don't have uh, the use of it or you're not used to to, to do it and um, you it's frightening because you don't really know what will happen and what to do like it's a white page you no know? so uh, the the thing I would recommend is to find yourself some constraints about this white page and some rules that you will apply to to your drum solo or to yourself uh, it can be for example playing just one element of the kit or playing with just one limb or not playing a groove you are forbidden to play grooves uh, or just as mm, choosing a subdivision and playing on top of it and playing with silences with uh, spaces with you know a lot of of things you can think of uh, playing only only a category of elements only the symbols only the the terms only the the foot why not uh it can be a, a lot of fun rules like this and of course the more you have uh, different ways of expressions and vocabulary you can uh, the more you can talk on the kit the less you you will be limited so uh, of course it depends on on what you can do on the kit but yeah just express yourself and um, and, and try to be inventive and try to play with the sounds and it's a uh, you have a lot of things to to do so you, it's just about defining the rules even for me sometimes i'm like okay i, I will do my solo and I'm, i have absolutely no idea uh, of what i would gonna play but of what i will gonna play of what i will be playing <laughs> um but I already have kind of red line in my head. I know that I will be playing this kind of polyrhythm, this kind of ostinado, this kind of feels, this kind of uh, uh, explorations on the tom, this kind of melodies. I like to play just one melody and then you go around it and you you play, you know, grooves over it and stuff like this. And it can be a lot of things 
things, but you have to de define them just before you, you go on your solo or on stage. And uh, yeah, try to find things that uh, are different from what you can do uh, on with a band. Like a soloing is not only, uh, it's not like a uh, groove you can do on a, a play with your bands. Like uh, it, you already do that with your bands, just groove, feels, groove, feels. A, a drum solo is not that interesting if you do grooves and feels because we already know everything like this. Um, it, it's, I like to see it like a composition you, you make live, you know, um, um, rhythmical and maybe melodical journey you will give to the audience. So it's really uh, a composition thing, uh, actually. So yeah, I think that's uh, the advice I can give you. <laughs> Fantastic. That's fantastic advice. Fantastic. Um, I, you've mentioned Gavin Harrison, which he's a phenomenal drummer, and I love the way he, he plays and how he approaches his instrument. But what are some of the other influences, uh, drumming influences for you? I have a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot of uh, different uh, <clears throat> drummers. Uh, it's not only uh, drumistic influences. You know, I, I listen to a lot of different styles of music and it's already an influence on itself. So um, a lot of bands like Lipros, Haken, Steven Wilson, uh, rock, prog, metal, progressive bands I, I really like. And uh, all this stuff is already in influence to me. I don't uh, remember all the, the drummers' names, but uh, yeah, you don't you don't want to neglect all the, the musical uh, things you you hear. But um, about the drummers themselves, I can uh, talk about um, Chris Coleman that I appreciate very much. I, I think he has everything. <laughs> Yeah. It has it all, like uh, uh, the technique, the musicality, the, 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 the yeah, everything. The, everything. <laughs> as a human Agreed. being also, the, the humor, the everything. Um, yeah. I also like Aaron Spears, Eric Moore, this kind of, you know, um, gospel shops guys. I love uh, Tony Royster Jr. Oh, yeah. Also, I uh, think about his 12 years old solo. I was thinking the same thing. That solo is what made me want to be able to solo. Yeah, yeah he, he was already like, he cannot do better, actually. Than <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Benny Greb, I really like his groove. Um, I... <laughs> I like Sarah Tower too because she's oh, yeah. so relaxed and fun and she don't care about her looks. We don't <laughs> care, like we, we wanna have fun, you know, that's exactly it. And I really love her style and uh, I wish I could, we could have a beer together one day. <laughs> would be a, um, um, ha, how do I say, a concours, uh, a contest, yeah, uh, drum faces contest, like. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, That's fantastic. Uh, Marco Minman, of course. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Yeah, I, I cannot uh, tell them, I, I cannot, you know, uh, I have, um, so many different uh, drummers I love that I cannot uh, I cannot speak all their names. <laughs> sure, of course. Yeah, but that's that's a great list. I, I love the drummers that you've listed. Um, when you've toured and when you've done um, shows different places, can you think of one um, in particular that you just had the time of your life that was your 
favorite um, performance maybe? Mm. Yeah. Um, on a solo perspective, like uh, as a clinician, I loved when I uh, did a masterclass uh, on my in my birth town actually it's Toulouse in the south of France and it, it was last year like uh, almost literally uh, from one day uh, close last year um, a, one year before it was an event with Annika Niles mm -hmm. and um, we were performing like uh, one after each other um on the same uh, venue so it was uh, it was amazing and uh, i was so excited with this event because all my friends and family and uh, everyone I, I knew from town was here and i was so uh, excited and yeah it was a uh, very very great and i have a super cool memory of it this for uh about you know bands or gigs with bands uh i don't have a particular event that strikes me oh yes yes i have um it was with with pv nova it's a, mm -hmm. a band i'm playing with uh it's very exciting on on stage it's very funky it's uh, everyone dances and uh, everyone is uh having a very fun time and uh, we were performing at the Trianon, Trianon uh, in Paris. It's a pretty known venue. And it was like two years ago and it was fantastic. I love that. Um, and I downloaded your song today, the, the one that you sent me. The, uh, yeah, Pinova. it's yeah. Pinova too, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. how wonderful. It's so good. You guys gotta gotta go check that out. Um, so that leads me to this. Where can they find um, your music or where can they find you on social media? Um, in our group, of course, but where else would they be able to find you? Okay, so uh, I'm on almost every social media. <laughs> I'm very active on Instagram because um, I can not only post regular videos, but also stories with ideas. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, on the kit and uh, I have some uh, cool stuff coming and just record it and post it on my story on uh, Instagram. So it's very complete. Uh, it's just Kami Bijo um i have some things on youtube too and you can find a lot of different things going from uh recording uh lives with my bands uh i do some guitar and singing playing on my own too so you can also find this uh, kind of thing on my youtube channel um it's kami bijo too you, you will find find it uh, pretty easily and um, on Facebook too, Camille Bijot. <laughs> uh, I have a pro page. You, you can follow this pro page. Uh, and I have a um, private personal page, but it's more for friends and, and uh, family. And uh, I have my website and uh, on it's camillebijot.com. It's very basic. <laughs> so you can really uh, follow me on those uh, medias. I keep it updated very often. Uh, of course, when I will be able to do some uh, masterclass and stuff, you, you will know about it and also on my website. Um, for the music, um, yeah, you can find it on YouTube or I don't have really um, proper tracks where you can play on drums uh, on top of those tracks. I don't have any proper uh, tracks yet, uh, except two tracks that uh, you can find on my, on my website, uh, but they will be hopefully released soon. And uh, you can find, <laughs> if you're curious about it, you can find uh, some compositions and stuff I do um, next to the drums where I it's more like folk pop things and with the guitar and my my voice <laughs> so it's on sound soundcloud it's soundcloud 
dot com slash M E W K A Muka. Okay. Muka music. So M E M E W K A M U S E C C. Yeah, music. No, it's not E. -A -I. I see. Uh, a uh, oh <laughs> and because uh music yeah muka music very good Mucha. okay last chance does anybody else have a question for camille before we have to go nobody come on <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted to say thank you so much, Camille, for um, taking the time out of your day to to hang out with us and to answer all of all of my uh, questions. And um, I appreciate all you do. Please feel free to share anything that you're doing with our group. And I know that uh, we will want to support you in any way that we can. OK, thank you a lot. Thank you for having me and uh, sure. just being part of this and asking me questions. It's really a pleasure for me to to share all this and to to try to answer to all these questions. So thank you a lot and sure. uh, keep having fun, keep drumming and uh, keep uh, enjoying life with drums. It's very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, we're going to have another guest on Thursday, Ellie Bertrand. She's from Canada. She's fantastic, a friend of mine. And so please, uh, please try to join us for that. I think that's on the March calendar. We've got tons of new people coming up. So um, I hope that you guys can catch it. Camille, I'll also be um, putting this on our new YouTube channel for the Drummer Girls oh, United. Cool. So I will send you that link as well. And I will be putting it on our Drummer Girls United um, page as well. Okay, super so cool. So from, from that, lot, don't forget. please feel free to share it with anybody that you want on any of your social media. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Take Have care. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.